so excited about this. I know. It's so great to just talk to you. You too. And in our Valentine's Day colors, not even playing. So excited about this. Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay. We are live on YouTube. We're live on Zoom. We're live everywhere for this special on Valentine's Day. I'm so excited about this week because it's Valentine's Day week and I'm doing everything about love. Uh, love, self-love, right? Is a little bit of everything. Uh, all of it included. So tell me, Carly, I'm so excited to hear about your self-love coaching. Can you just introduce yourself to everyone that's listening anyone who's watching right now or will be watching this week on valentine's day tell me more about you sure thanks julia so i'm carly walkin my healing practice is walkin wellness so i currently do self-love coaching and it's very just healing harmonizing work um work with folks on self-acceptance, self-love, self-trust, kind of just all the components that lead to self-love. Like to me, self-love is both an act that you can do like at any time. And it's also like a feeling that builds over time from all those little actions. And so, yeah, I work with folks on that with on their limiting beliefs, identifying those and then repatterning them. And um, I went with the the wellness in the name of my company. This is like a rebrand that I'm going through because I'm also a body talk practitioner in training. So once I'm certified with that, I'll be able to go live with the body talk sessions. And um, right now I do them for donations because um, I'm just getting like my, my practice in before I'm certified. So yeah, I, I just, I love helping people love themselves the way they are now because I really feel like we all deserve to enjoy life no matter what part of life we're in no matter what we look like on the outside and that there to me there really aren't like prerequisites for happiness it, it really just comes from within and you know with happiness comes the self-love and with self-love comes the happiness and so they're very tied together for me I love that. And do you have any tips for Valentine's Day as it's approaching? So what can we do to love ourselves more this week? Oh, so many things, right? But like one yeah. of the one of the best things, like my most favorite things that's like an act of self-love is some people call them affirmations. And I like to view them as like self compliments. Well, I guess those are kind of two different things, but both are great strategies for self-love. So we'll, I'll start with the affirmations, just like picking a phrase that you need to hear at the moment, something that affirms something positive about you, that things are going to be okay, that this is what it looks like when it's all working out, like some, some sort of phrase that you wish someone would tell you and then just say it to yourself and you use the I am form for affirmation. So you say, I am resourced. I am beautiful. I am happy. I am desirable. I am insert whatever here, like whatever you need to hear, tell yourself that. I and am loved. Let's Can go I, ahead. I am loved. Yes. I am loved. I love you. Can I like, how about saying I love you in the mirror? Yes, absolutely. That's a great one. Any sort of self-talk that you do, if you do it in the mirror, it's kind of amplified because you're like watching someone yourself say something to you. So even though you're watching yourself, you're still, your eyes are like registering that there's a human here saying this thing that I'm also hearing to me. So oh, cool. So yeah, yeah. is there like a better time to do it? Or do you do in a specific time? Do you incorporate into your morning routine? Do you do it before you go to sleep? Is there a better time of the day to do this? Honestly, anytime. And 
I like to use affirmations as kind of like a prevention tool, right? So like how you're saying, incorporated into the morning routine. I definitely talk to myself in the mirror every day. Look yourself in the eye. I look myself in the eye and like say nice things. And so that's a really good way to like start the day, to keep the momentum going, to, to build up that overall feeling of self-love that comes with time and repeated action. Um, and then also it's kind of like a, like I hate the word damage control, but like if you're starting to go through it, if you get triggered and you're like, you can't just go be with your feelings at the time, affirmations in your head for me at least have been a game changer, like lifesaver in those moments. Like if I'm, you know, out and about and I'm conversing with folks and of course in, you know, the pre-Rona times, if I'm out and about conversing, <laughs> but like, if I'm triggered in the moment. Wearing a mask. I'm, no, it's out and about six feet away, wearing a mask. <laughs> right. But anyway, like if I don't have time to go like, you know, sit with my feelings and like, or like, you know, lay in bed or meditate or any of those things. Like I'll just start doing affirmations in my head, just saying them to myself over and over and over again. Cause really it's like, it's calming the whole system. Like it's telling the the body, all of the cells in the body and your subconscious, your conscious mind, you're telling all of those things, like something calming, something affirming, something that's really like communicating your worth, your value, your love, your beauty. So So. just give an example, let's say, so if we're, you know, if we're having a conversation with a group of friends or group of people, and yeah, before, when we were allowed to do that, um, well, what would you tell yourself to, if you get triggered, just, do you have like a specific example of something that either happened to you or that it helped you? That you, yes. you know, what so, is a specific uh, sentence or what would you tell yourself that it calms you down immediately? Mm-hmm. For, for me, something that I have struggled with a lot over the years is like body image and relationship with food and my body. And so Things like that are a big trigger for me, like body comments or in the past they have been, but like sometimes that I can recall being around people or, and you know, this could happen on a Zoom call too. Like you can get triggered on the internet also and not be able to, you know, go escape to, to be with yourself. Right. So, you know, in the past, if someone said like a really backhanded compliment about my body, like something like, oh, you wear your weight so well. And so on the inside, I'm like, oh, what does that mean? Like, <laughs> you know, do they think I'm gross or it's like one of those compliments that's not really a compliment. And especially back in the times where stuff like that triggered me, I didn't really have the conversational skills to navigate that. And I wasn't healed enough to navigate it in time, you know, to call someone out and be like, hey, actually, that's, I'm not really cool with that comment that you made it actually doesn't make me feel good or you know so maybe now I could go that route but back then like I would just be like oh thanks and then in my head I am beautiful my body is lovely my body is okay just the way it is I am acceptable I am loved I am worthy of love just as I am yeah, I, the I am beautiful one. <laughs> it's been a, a, a lifesaver over the years. And, and there were times um, when I was younger and getting in relationships for, um, I was a little bit inexperienced in actual like long-term relationship. And I was more experienced in like dating around. And I can recall a lot of my insecurities coming up in relationship um, when I was starting to, to, actually like get into an established relationship for the first time and that was another time I would get triggered all my insecurities were like coming out in relationship which you might know something about I know we were talking before this about how we were into like love and relationships (laughs) so it was um yeah again the, the like I am worthy 
I am valuable just as I am. I am desirable. I am beautiful. They're just, you can say them again and again and again in your head. Really helpful. Yeah. Since you brought that up, I was actually going to ask you about that anyway. But uh, when we're talking about dating and relationships, especially this week, and we were the colors of Valentine's Day. So thanks for joining the Valentine's Day week special yeah. color, um, red and pink. So when we're talking about dating and relationships, why is it sometimes that um, in, your, in your opinion or in your experience that we get triggered more often when the, when the subject of dating comes up? Because that is something I'm very passionate to talk about. Um, because I feel even, of course, like you have to love yourself first, but even when you do love yourself, it's still um, going to relationship, you're still kind of raw and it feels like you're taking, like, it feels like you have that beginner's mind again. You're like, oh my God, I have to train a whole nother, you know, it's like train myself in a whole nother scenario or like stepping into a, a different kind of game. It's like learning a different I don't want to put it as a game because I know a lot of people that, that kind of has like a negative connotation when it comes to relationships, but it's like a level up basically. Um, and sometimes it can be challenging. So why do you think that uh, relationships are more challenging sometimes than self-love? Well, I don't know if it's necessarily more challenging than self-love. And like, I think they're both really challenging in their own arenas And, you know, I'll say this to begin that the, you know, kind of like the, from a spiritual perspective, the point of our relationships is so that we can grow and evolve. And of course, you know, like enjoy, like be loved, find a life partner if that's, you know, what you're looking for. And like, they can have many purposes that are very different to each and every person. And when we are in relationship with someone else and, and this goes you know, on all levels, friend, family, anyone that you're in relationship with, they're going to be a mirror for you. So if you're willing to look into what's coming up in that relationship, they're mirroring things within you. So like naturally relationships are meant to show us things about ourselves. And oftentimes, especially when, you know, we're dealing with triggers triggers are signifying to us that there's something there that needs healing, that needs attention. So the fact that romantic relationships are that, it's like the, the stakes are higher, you know, with family and friends, we know they're going to be there. Like maybe not, I, things change, things happen. There's friend breakups, which, you know, can, can really hurt also for even, you know, some folks with their family don't, stay in touch forever and those come with their own pain scale right but we tend to be very invested in our romantic relationships working out because there's like a chance that they might not right when we go into romance we know that we could get hurt and that's what it's kind of what we're agreeing to when we're like all right I'm gonna put my heart on the line here and try and find that that love that partnership that romance and so in that setting where the stakes are higher and you're already like just a little more invested than in your other relationships, you know, with your like heart and your energy. And, and um, so when the triggers come up, they can be deeper because you kind of go deeper into different parts of yourself with a romantic partner that you might not do with just a friend or a family member. So there's going to be other things that are reflected back to you through that romantic relationship. And that's why a lot of times a lot of our, of our stuff comes up in romantic relationships. Like, I don't know about you, but for me, like, especially in the past, like in romantic relationships, like years ago, I have like self imploded. Like I go into it thinking I'm a confident, ready for love person. And then I get in it and I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> the, that those are some insecurities. Okay. Didn't know those were there. And so it's, I think, you know, to, to your question, I think it's just such a unique situation. Like, you know, typically, unless we identify as like polyamorous, like when we're 
dealing with romance, we're dealing with like one person. So it's just a very high stakes relationship. And it's, it's right in our face because we're so invested in it. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I love everything you said. Um, and I think it has a lot to do. I love that you brought that into it, that it has a lot to do with expectations too. Mm. Because when you raise the expectations, of course, we have high expectations for ourselves too. And when, when we're talking about self-love, you know, I don't mean to take away from that in, you know, in any arena because so you need self-love no matter what you need self-love you know to lead a healthy life and to lead a healthy relationship and and I agree that's what we're here for we're all learning and evolving and trying to figure out what path to take that will make us happy so it's that pursuit of happiness that raises the stakes so so much because we have the, the added pressure, the high stakes, and and the, the, all the expectations of, oh, this should be, you know, if it's, yeah, if you're looking for that one life partner, this should be the person of my life. And um, from my experience, I actually feel that now I'm learning to, especially this past year, I'm learning to just take care of myself and do a lot of self-care, self-love practices, and being um, having more boundaries and being more intentional on who are the people that I want to spend my time with and, and that I, you know, that I want in my life. And even when it comes to friends or family or, you know, whatever feels good or who is really enriching your, enriching your life in a way. And the same way in, in relationships and dating, um, you know, when I'm starting to talk to someone or I'm meeting someone, I feel like in the past I've been that person that is like, Oh my God, maybe they're the one, you know, maybe this is the, the relationship. Yeah. And, and I think that, well, two things, one that raises the expectations so much and two that you might just throw yourself into somebody that's not really meant for you. I think that's part of it too, because we're, if, if you're not tending to your own needs as far as self-love, this is what I've experienced in the past is that, you know, then you're going to, you're trying to get the love from so bad from someone else that you might just throw yourself into like a relationship that wasn't really healthy or wasn't really meant for you, that it was just like a hint of love is enough, basically. And I've become more, the more I do my self-love practices and self-care throughout this whole year, I've become more, you know, I would say selective, you know, as far as if I would just go by the feeling, if something doesn't feel right, or if there's any red flags in the beginning, I won't even go there. I would just say, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable with this. We're probably not good, not a good match. You know, we're probably not right for each other. Um, like, I won't even, I won't even like go into, oh my God, but we need to like try to see and make this work. And I would just be very honest with the other person and with myself. And, and I feel that opens up the doors to actually be with somebody that will make me happy. So it's like, <laughs> it's like going against the, you know, counterintuitive, but I feel like the more you don't create those kinds of expectations, the more you have like chances to actually be with someone that's good for you. Yeah. Well, and you just mentioned like so many great strategies for self-love the boundaries the taking care of yourself focusing on yourself deciding who you want to surround yourself with like being very intentional and the you know the part about when you're trying to meet someone and if any little thing is off-putting or doesn't feel right to then set the boundary for yourself then and there like I, I don't want to move forward with this and that is so hard like I can relate so much on that because especially with the romance like we where, you know, at least for me, like I have, especially in the past, been like looking for it. I want it. And maybe that was because my self-love was not as built up back then. And I think too, there's so much in our, in the media that, you know, tells us that finding a partner is our number one goal in life. Like we're not complete until we have a partner. And so it can really, kind of like mess with our priorities like we put ourselves on the back burner to then pursue a relationship but 
sounds like you've been really like honing your skills in that arena and becoming a great dater. Like I am. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say I mean, I'm a great dater. I don't think I date enough to call myself a great dater. Well, it's weird <laughs> times to be dating, but it, I mean, it sounds like you're the kind of structure that you surround yourself with, with dating is really like positive and supportive and structured in love. Yeah, I I guess like I, I would say I did have a lot of time for self-reflection the last year. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll probably say that I'll, you know, I've become a, a better self-lover for sure. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, and I think speaking to that right when we're we're a better self-lover and we're not needing so much from the outside that you know is in all different areas of our lives whether it's our work life our romantic life either the way we physically look um our health any of those things the more self-love we have the less we need to like be a certain way in all those other areas of our lives like when we get the validation from ourselves and it's unconditional and it's inherent because that's how it is like each each and every one of us has inherent value inherent worth and it doesn't need to come from anywhere outside of us yet we've been led to believe that that is not the case and so I think it's just it's really eye-opening and exciting and really difficult journey to be on, to be on the self-love journey, because there's a lot of factors that are present that can really hinder the, the self-love at times. And so really, it, you know, just committing to self-love and to put more attention on it. It's not about doing anything perfect or to like do all the things at once. It's really just moment by moment. Like, how can we communicate to ourselves that we love ourselves, that we trust ourselves, that we are worthy and cared for and valued by us first. Yeah. So, always starts with our, ourselves first, right? Mm -hmm. And do you have any any techniques or any practices that you started during uh, lockdown or the last? year or so that you've you didn't do before and you discovered you know as you're in lockdown as we were on quarantine and that it worked for you so I have been doing like so many <laughs> self-love and wellness practices for so many years now that my struggle has been trying to do too much at once so really during quarantine I have learned to it I've learned that kind of less is more for me in this stage of my life right now and so instead of trying to get up and do a two-hour morning routine at 6 a.m every day that I do 12 different things um that wasn't really working for me like I was I was not completing it not doing everything and then that kind of was affecting how I was viewing myself I'm like well why can't I do this this is you know I have nothing but time right now like <laughs> why why can't I do all these things and I and I realized that it was just it's like too much too soon like we can't ask a you know a kindergartner to write a novel like they don't they don't know the things they need to know they don't have the skills yet that they need to be able to do that they've got to 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 go through the grades and to learn learn one thing at a time and then be able to apply them so yeah i think i think extending myself grace and spaciousness mm -hmm. kind of like the self love practice i guess is allotting myself grace and spaciousness if I had to name it <laughs> something that I was not doing before I think there there's like because we went into this way of living so abruptly 
right? Like we, everyone was living their normal life. And then all of a sudden we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't be around anyone. And we had like way more time to ourselves at home, most of us anyway, than ever before. And so it, it was really easy to get into like, well, okay, I'll, I, now I'm going to just like do a morning routine every day, work out every day, eat perfect every day. Like, and it just, it didn't exactly go like that. And so having that, having self-love anyway, like saying like, it's okay, not being so hard on myself. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, looking back non-judgmentally and saying, okay, well, why didn't that work? And what's something that I could try out that maybe is a little less demanding or a little less time consuming. And so really, I guess I learned how to kind of play around with, with my self-love routines and practices and to really discover what works for me at what time for how long (laughs) and to really be more, flexible with myself on those things I love the grace giving yourself grace that's so important Mm -hmm. and just acknowledging that it hasn't been easy because I you know I was thinking about that the other day that when I think about self-love you know that's something I need to work on we all need to work on you can never have too much self-love you can keep working on it Um, but I, I was thinking about that that sometimes I'm too harsh on myself that I will, you know, I need the self-love and self-compassion so much. I do a self-compassion meditation every morning, like when I wake up as soon, and you know, I've done it multiple times that I haven't done it as soon as I wake up. And then I noticed, okay, I really need to do it as soon as I wake up. I cannot talk to anybody. I cannot check my phone. I can't check any emails until I do my self-compassion meditation, because it just puts me in like a different place, like emotionally, uh, you know, that I'm just in that space of self-compassion and and not checking my my text messages until the afternoon. I created like a time. It's basically between 12 and 8 is when I'll answer, you know, text messages or emails. But anything after that, I will just it's just like, OK, we'll get you know, I'll get to it the next day. I could, th- that's enough. Like that's eight hours. 12 to 8 is eight hours. That's enough. You know, and and I think that's the one thing that I noticed in the beginning of lockdown that I was on so much all the time because everybody knew, okay, you're at home, you're available, you know? Uh, And then I realized, okay, you know, we need to create like our own boundaries. Okay. Well, in the morning is my morning routine is when I'm going to do my meditation, my affirmations, when I'm going to go out for a walk, I'm going to get some fresh air. I'm going to do my exercise, whatever I feel like doing, it's going to be my morning time after 12, I can get to anything else. Or even like, if I want to, you know, watch like a inspiring lecture on YouTube or watch a class on mindfulness, I will always do that and do it first. So it was something that I started calling, like putting myself first, but not just, you know, metaphorically speaking, like literally, like when you wake up, you're going to put yourself first before you do anything else. Mm. And that is something that really helped me because otherwise, you know, one thing leads to another. And then I'll realize when I don't do that, you know, my whole day will go by and I'll be doing what everybody has been asking me all day and, you know, emailing me and messaging me and just having that boundary and saying, okay, I need to do this first because I need to fill up my tank, you know, first have that self-love, the self-compassion to take care of myself before I can take care of anyone else. Um, and it's not easy sometimes. And that's when you have to give yourself grace to realize that even having those boundaries are not easy and, and telling people that is not easy and standing up for yourself sometimes is not easy. And that's when I think grace comes in and it's so important. Sometimes I forget to give myself grace and thank you for reminding me and reminding everyone because just having that space of, okay, what I'm trying to do is not easy and I give myself grace and just having that moment that realizing that you know doing a podcast about relationships and and putting these issues out there having these deep meaningful conversations with everybody is not easy 
So we can give ourselves grace for that, that we are doing it. We're here, we're having the conversation and just being present because that was another thing too, that it was, um, it was something that I kept judging myself on how I'm showing up. So it was like, oh, I have to show up with energy or I have to show up, you know, as my best self. And, and that's okay, you know, to have like high standards, but at the same time, sometimes if I wasn't feeling as my best self, I would say, oh, I'm not my best self. So maybe I won't do this today. And then I realized if I just say to myself, I just have to show up. All I have to do is present. Can you do that? It just mm. made everything much easier. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I went on for, for a while there. <laughs> so no, you everything you were time. saying was, is so spot on and so true and so beautiful. Like, I really love that you brought up self-compassion because I think compassion is something that we so eagerly extend to anyone else, but we don't think about it. We don't think ourse- about ourselves that way naturally. And, you know, compassion like that, like now I'm like, ooh, I want to like Google what that word means, like exactly. But, you know, to me, it's compassion is filled with like understanding and like that built in grace, like we, that kind of unconditional acceptance, like anything that's happening is okay. And, or if it's not okay, like it's okay that it's not okay. And, you know, I feel like sometimes when I'm talking about like self love, self compassion, or, just like all these things that are so positive and we're, we're like, I, I feel like sometimes I'll try and it's like, I'm trying to put a positive spin on things. And like, sometimes things that happen in life are just like not positive <laughs> or it's, it's hard to find the positivity in the moment. And I think that's a huge part of self-love too, of like not having that toxic positivity as it's called now of like sometimes it's okay to just not be okay and to feel those feelings. And I I feel like we've been very kind of disconnected from our feelings and emotions because we've kind of been conditioned to, to feel like, okay, our work, what you're doing and you know, your, your life, your profession, school, whatever it is, is more important than how you're feeling. So get it together. Like, that's kind of how I, f- I feel like we're conditioned to behave. And yet that is such a lack of compassion for ourselves that if we're actually going through something, like we need space and time to feel those things. And it's okay to feel those things. Like, it's okay to cry. It's okay to, to feel depressed. It's okay. And, and I think accepting and allowing these things can really help alleviate them. Cause like, ultimately we, we want the, the bad times to come and go. <laughs> and so I think that compassion piece, right? Like whatever's up within ourselves, that's okay. And to, to pay attention to it. Sometimes all feelings need our acknowledgement. Like, you know, a lot of times I'll say to myself, like literally out loud, like, okay, I'm, I'm, realizing that I'm a little sad right now and I've been pushing it down and pushing it down and pretending I'm okay and pretending I'm okay and I'm not I'm not okay in this moment and I'm gonna be sad and that's okay and so often when I when I do that it it just like takes all the pressure off me it's like I was trying so hard to not be sad that I was running myself ragged and and then the moment that I just kind of surrender to what is and accept that I'm having some sad feelings, then it was like the, the beginning of the end of the sadness, like the, the sadness could start to really run its course and then be felt and ultimately released. Thank you for bringing that up. That's so powerful. Just uh, the acceptance of your feeling, allow yourself to feel your feelings. It's so important. Yeah, because and what you said about toxic positivity, that is so important to bring up too, because I've seen both ends of the spectrum, which is, you know, sometimes people that are really um, not able to do anything because you're dealing with your emotions, 
but they're they don't have the tools to just climb out of it or even even if it's through acceptance or starting to accept it like you said so it can dissolve and and you can start moving through that and then i also see the other side of it the other end of the spectrum which is being positive all the time even no matter what happens you're still positive but in a way that you're not really genuinely positive and happy because it's almost borderline being in denial. If you are feeling all those things and then you're, you know, in the outer world, you're acting like, oh my God, everything is great. Um, it feels more like denial than real happiness because when you're in, you know, behind closed doors, you know that you're not feeling like everything is okay. And if you don't know, even behind closed doors, then it's like you're even more in denial, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> But that's, uh, that's something that I, you know, I have seen and I have experienced, you know, somewhat um, that idea that everybody will look at you and say, oh, especially with social media, you know, like if you're traveling or it sometimes like I would feel like a frustration almost that people would look at my social media and they'll say, oh, my God, you're so happy. You look so happy. But no one actually, you know, asked me, are you happy? How are you feeling? Mm -hmm. And that's why I started, you know feed your soul and and even like making a point at asking people how are you but not just how oh how are you but like are you happy are you really happy how are you feeling today and sometimes people won't share but I feel that that's like a big step like if you have people around you they haven't checked in on them especially now to just try to check in on anyone you can you know also respecting their boundaries maybe they don't want to talk about it but just even if someone seems happy, sometimes it's just if, you know, they're just putting up a front because they don't want to show their real feelings. Mm. And like you said too, like even if behind closed doors, they they don't even recognize that something's wrong. It, it's like being so detached from from our own feelings or emotions that we like can't even, like <laughs> I can't even deal with that. Yeah, and I, I think that that tends to happen. And, um, you know, and like you said, even about the how are you question, it's just a formality. Like nine times out of 10, when people ask that question, they don't want the actual how that person is doing inside and out. Like we, we throw that around like it's just like a greeting. Yeah. And but if someone actually started going into it of like, well, actually, I'm not so great. I've been feeling really depressed and uh, really disconnected, like a lot of people would probably get really uncomfortable with someone sharing that because it's just not normalized. Sharing those types of things is not normalized. It's not mainstream. It's not expected. And it's kind of like outside of our cultural norms in, in like our everyday um, interactions. And so I really feel strongly also about destigmatizing feelings and crying. And, and I still, I'm, you know, years into this of like, when I need to cry, I cry because crying is our body's way of releasing what it needs to release. So holding in tears is literally holding in like the crap that your body wants to let go of. And every tear has a different chemical makeup because it's literally stuff that your body is like, purposely intentionally releasing and so but but still like I run into it all the time where if I start crying people are like oh it's okay don't cry what's wrong you know and I'm like no yeah it is okay like I'm I'm releasing like I actually get excited when I cry now in a weird way like of course if I'm like really really in it I'm not excited I'm very sad but as I'm releasing I'm like oh there's like a little part of me that's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah yeah, that's awesome. I feel like one thing that I notice more that we're sharing more about the fact that we cry, because I cry all the time. Like, if there's a week that I didn't cry, that's like unusual. Like mm. I, cry, I cry at least like once or twice a week, at least, mm. uh, you know, like, and I feel like I didn't mention, like, I wouldn't say this before, you know, and it just got to a point that I, you know, in this last year that I was just like, 
I cry. I cry a lot. Are you guys crying? You know, that I just wanted to ask like people, is everybody crying now or yeah. is it just me? Like, you know, <laughs> well, and like you saying that, like, are you crying? Like it almost is, you know, to me, it, it feels like a, like a type of like hygiene, right? Like if we're not crying, we're getting like gunky inside. It's like stuff, stuff's like stuck. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, like how, most of the time when we see something, someone crying, we're like, oh, is, you know, is something wrong? But really it's like, if we see no one crying ever, for me, I'm like, what's wrong? Why haven't you cried? Like, are you, are you letting yourself feel like, you know, I, it's, I know it's hard too. Like I, I can relate with you. Like I've always been a free crier, like not, you know, too, too, too often where it was like, you know, coming up like all the time, like growing up and stuff. But like, I've always cried in movies. I've always, um, it just been easy to cry. And so, yeah, I, that being said, I'm saying that to say like, it's easy for me to say, just cry, like, just let it out. Um, and like, I recognize that it's difficult. It's difficult for, for folks to go there, especially when they've, you know, had to make a survival tactic out of not crying or out of holding it in or pushing it down or pretending things are okay. And, you know, my hope is that as a society and like as a population, as a world, we can start like moving towards just more openness around that, around feeling bad or feeling anything. And, you know, for anyone who, who is listening to this and like is out of touch with your, with, with crying. Um, yeah, it's uncomfortable and it clears it out. Like it, it makes room for the new that, and same thing with feeling any negative emotions, you're literally feeling them in a way that's like processing them and releasing them. Like they have to be felt in order to go somewhere. They don't just go away. Even if, things get better, that emotion is probably stored somewhere in your body. If you didn't feel it, cry it out, release it. So that, that's why some of us, you know, can go a long time. Seems like we're good. And then all of a sudden we hit a wall and we're a mess because we like don't have that maintenance kind of, of over time more often going within, inquiring how I'm feeling, feeling how I'm feeling, crying, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah, it's so important to talk about it because I feel the more we talk about it, the you know, more people will feel okay about crying. I think even when I was crying as a teenager, you know, I used to cry a lot uh, behind lock, lock, locked doors. Like I would go to my bedroom or I would cry, you know, in the bathroom, I would run to the bathroom. And, and I always thought, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Why am I always crying? Or, you know, when something happens, but I just had like, I think I've always been kind of sensitive. Then when I started um, doing theater, you know, I, I kind of transformed that energy into, you know, the artistic sensitivity and then crying on stage. It was like a, a catharsis for me, you know, okay, I'm crying on stage or mm -hmm. even when I'm doing a stand-up comedy, it felt like, okay, I'm talking about it openly. So it feels like a catharsis. It's almost like crying, you know? Um, so it felt like I was transforming it somehow, all that energy. And then now that, you know, well, basically there are no stages around the world. Um, we have to figure out how to transform those emotions. And meditation has been a huge tool for me. I mean, the first time I meditated, which was about like seriously meditated, which was about four or five years ago. And I went into this like meditation retreat and I was like, okay, I want to figure this out. What is this about? I'm just going to be in silence for, you know, an hour and a half. Okay, I can do that. But it, what actually happened is that I cried so much as they were guiding the meditation. It was the uh, Sir, Sir, Sir Guru, Guru uh, guiding the meditation. I was just bawling. I was crying and, I, and people were asking me, like, what's happening? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like really easy. I'm crying. I didn't know I was going to cry. I'm crying. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that happens. If I, you know, if I'm dealing with something, if I haven't cried, I'll meditate and I'll start crying. 
because it's like being in touch with your real feelings like what you're really really feeling and then you you it, you purge it it's like you purify it it dissolves after you cry so crying is so good for you mm. and I love that you brought up meditation too and, and it's you know it's it makes sense to me that in that space of meditation your tears could come more easily because you know meditation is getting out of our thoughts and into our bodies or just out of our thoughts and and having a focused experience on just one thing which like if you're sitting and meditating you know with your eyes closed it might be your breath it might be you know just focusing on not thinking or <laughs> and and a lot of times though in that meditation space what comes up is what like is up right like you're making the space for things to come up and so it makes sense to me that your tears would start coming in that space and also I'm, I'm curious like I, I feel like especially five six years ago if I started crying at something and people were like asking me what was going on I would have just been like I, I would have been overwhelmed I would have been like I don't know how to talk to you right now or <laughs> and it, I it it makes me wonder how that was for you at the time when people were like, what's wrong? What's going on? And... Well, I think I started coming to terms with it, uh, with the crying. Um, but for a long time, I think I was scared of being vulnerable. And it was something that I heard. Um, it was actually, okay, so it was actually, I was in the ayahuasca retreat. Mm-hmm. And, but this was, um, you know, this was about like getting into your feelings and everything. And one of the things that they said, it was a sentence. It was kind of, it, it's not that it started there, but it was a sentence that it stuck with me that I realized I had been doing my whole life that I was like, oh my God, I, I can't cry because they're going to find out that I have feelings. They're going to find out I'm vulnerable. So you know, how can I show them that I'm vulnerable? Like we're supposed to have this front. Like, I think a lot of people feel that way. And in my head, for some reason, I had rationalized that people can't find out that I have feelings. Mm -hmm. And the sentence that he told me was like, you mean being human? They can't find out that you're human because that's what it means. It's being human, (laughs) you know? And I, and that just stuck with me that, you know, sometimes when, I start to judge myself or be harsh on myself, I will go back to that and I'll think, oh my God, that is being human. You know, this is what it is like to be human. We have all these feelings. We have all these complexities. We cry, we love, sometimes we're angry. We're not always going to get it right. It, you know, we're always trying our best, but we're not always going to, you know, get where like all that we're expecting and, it's part of being human. It's the human experience, right? So we, we start over the next day and when we keep going. I think that that all ties into grace and, and this whole year, it's been about that. It's to, as, at least for me, it's been about be present and keep going. Can you show up? Can you be present? And can you just keep going? That's all I'm going to ask from you. And just having that internal dialogue with myself that that is all I need to do. It just, it made me keep going and even do more than I would have done. It maybe if I, if I wasn't okay with, you know, just giving myself grace. Right. I, I think sometimes when we're so hard on ourselves without having compassion and, and understanding and grace, it, I feel like it does limit our output. We think it's, we're pushing ourselves to do more and to go harder and grind but like our our internal resources are finite like our our, of course our love right is infinite but like our energy our time our capacity to like carry out tasks you know in a day that is finite and and when we want to just push and push and push and push well it's like what if someone else was was doing that to us like I wouldn't want to do like anything they told me to do. I would be like, what, (laughs) like, get out of my space. Like, are you paying me? Like (laughs) what, you know? So it's, and, and then we, we don't allow ourselves 
like the space to do things from a place of feeling loved and cared for. And like you said earlier, having your tank filled up, we just want to like push, 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 because that's what we kind of have like been told that we need to do. Like there's no priority. I, I think the priority for like self-care, self-love, time, boundaries, I, and maybe it's because I'm, I've entered the field in the past several years, but I feel like it's only the past several years that I even hear about it. Um, I, I want to think it's becoming more mainstream, but, and then that's why I say maybe it's because I entered this field, but now I hear about it all the time. Um, and outside of like the wellness and coaching fields, you know, I wonder how present it is, or sometimes I'll see articles or something too, where it's like, oh, it's got this great headline, um, you know, and then the content of the article is like, mm, they tried, <laughs> you know, but it's still from a very like capitalistic patriarchal lens, I guess. And so, um, yeah, I feel like folks need to be a lot less hard on themselves than they are. Um, and if someone has resistance to that of, on being less hard on themselves, you're probably the hardest one on yourself and you actually really could tone it down. <laughs> like if you're like, no, nah, no, I need to be hard on myself. Then, <laughs> <I don't, laughs> like, <laughs> like that denial thing, right? Of like, no, I don't need love. I don't need compassion or grace. I'm a robot. Like, but like you said, it's being human. And I think accepting that like we're human, we're imperfect. We're supposed to have the good and the bad, the happy and the sad, the the tears of pain and tears of joy. Like there's duality in everything. And I, I think there's been a lot of duality this year too. Like having so much time to get to know ourselves right and then but also not having time to spend with loved ones and um so and then there's always duality and i think in any anything in life like day and night you know uh spring and fall summer and winter and um and finding that balance within each and every one of us i think is um something that we all have to do for ourselves of finding the balance um, between like work and rest, between um, discipline and going with the flow. And I'm like trying to figure out something that would balance between like grace, but I don't know, just, just give yourself grace. There's no duality in that <laughs> period. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think giving yourself grace is definitely good advice. Mm -hmm. And oh, I want to end with just uh, I know I can't I I can't believe like we can talk about this for so long. And I, I always feel like when we're talking about self love, love relationships, you know, it, it just the time just flies by because it's such a rich topic. I know um, we were talking for an hour. I'm like, no, I know yeah, it's crazy. Yeah um but it's, it's so important that we're doing this so I'm so happy that we actually got together and uh are having this conversation because I feel like an, a lot of people can take away from it and and need to hear that you know everybody could use a little bit more love in their lives mm -hmm. uh sprinkle Thanks. some love on valentine's week and just uh maybe just let's just take a breath like before because we didn't do it in the beginning so maybe just take a breath <sighs> and i'll do uh, affirmation my affirmation will be i love and accept myself and i give myself grace i love that it is going to be, I am worthy and valuable exactly as I am. Oh, amen. <laughs> Thank you so much for creating this space, this awesome podcast. And you're such a great like interviewer. And it felt, I feel like we really had a, a rich conversation that, like you said, I could, I could talk to you about this all night. 
<laughs> oh, thank you. I so enjoyed this as well. And um, if you want to tell people how they can find you before we end. Sure. So I, yeah, I am currently on Instagram and Facebook at Wolken Wellness, and that's W-O-L-K-E-N. And my website will be dropping very soon. It's going to be walkinwellness.com. And if someone happens to go there and it's not up yet, I'm, my launch date is 222. So. Oh my God. That is my lucky number. 222. Really? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Yay. Making it my lucky number too. <laughs> that is amazing. I love it. Yeah, yeah that's um, wellness.com. Wokenwellness.com. Yeah. And Woken Wellness on Instagram, Woken Wellness on Facebook. I'm already following you. So go follow Carly, Woken Wellness. Thank you so much for being here. This is the Feed Your Soul Mixtape. I'm Julia Milin, your host. And thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's wonderful. And we're still live.